And now, what will happen as you're preparing for surgery? About an hour or so before your open heart surgery is scheduled, someone will come and get you from your room and take you to a waiting area that is generally located just outside the operating theater. While you are there, you will meet briefly with an anesthesiologist who will ask you some simple questions like your birth date, your name, etc. You may also be asked to sign a surgical consent form at this time if you haven't already done so, and you may also meet with your surgeon briefly as well. For the purpose of this video, I will be referring to your surgeon most of the time as he. But remember, there are many female cardiothoracic surgeons also, and I mean no disrespect to them by using the term he. I am only using he as a convenience. Okay, enough said. Now, once your consent form has been signed and you are outside the surgical rooms, someone may give you a shot of something usually through an IV that will make you so mellow that you may or may not even remember going into surgery. I remember going into the room. I remember talking to someone that I knew there, but I can't remember exactly what we spoke about. Just that quickly, I was asleep. I tell you this because you shouldn't worry too much about actually going into surgery. For those of you who come into the hospital the morning of your surgery, you will go through basically the same procedure as the nurses prepare you for your surgery. If you are having bypass surgery, the buzzword for the procedure that you are about to have is called a cabbage. C-A-B-G. This stands for coronary artery bypass graft. If you are having surgery to either replace and or repair a heart valve, there are many similarities with both procedures, but there will be some differences, and those will also be discussed during this video. Now, back to where we were. In bypass surgery, there will be several procedures happening in concert, and so let's look at them. Once you are in surgery, a vein may be harvested from your leg, and that vein may be used for one of your bypass grafts. The vein is removed through a small incision that's made on the inside of your leg, about at your knee. Some patients can have more than one small incision, but it's nothing like the old days when patients were cut from their groin to their ankle to remove the vein. Now it's more of an annoyance than it is debilitating. Your surgeon may also be using a mammary artery that is located in your chest, but you won't see any evidence of that at all. If you only have a single bypass, you may not have a vein removed from your leg at all. Your surgeon may only use your mammary artery. Having said that, most surgeons will use a vein from your leg, but on occasion they may consider using an artery from your arm. I'm asked all the time why a surgeon would choose one over the other. Here's a brief non-medical reason why. Because an artery carries oxygenated blood away from your heart at a higher pressure than a vein that carries unoxygenated blood back to your heart, it is believed that an artery is a more resilient vessel than a vein. For that reason, surgeons will generally choose to use an artery on a younger patient rather than a vein because it is believed that the vessel used for your bypass will last longer. Your surgeon will discuss these options with you before your surgery and will tell you if he feels it would be appropriate. Once the quality of the harvested vessel is determined to be fine, then your open heart surgery will proceed. The surgeon will be already in the process of making approximately a six inch incision in the center of your chest. Then he will use a tool, much like the one that is used to remove a cast from a broken bone, to separate your breastbone or sternum. I'm sort of graphic about this because I have many patients who have always heard the statement cracking your chest. And some patients actually think that that is what is done. That could not be further from the truth. And there's another group of patients who actually wonder how the surgeon is going to get to their heart. So, just for the record, there is no cracking anything, and now you know. 
Without getting much more graphic, the surgeon moves some of your parts out of the way and begins the process of bypassing the blocked arteries that feed your heart muscle. He will attach one end of the vein he harvested and connect it to a blood source above the blockage and connect the other end below the blockage, allowing a new flow of blood to the heart muscle. I'm asked all the time, will my heart be stopped during surgery? In an off-pump procedure, the answer would be no. The surgeon performs all coronary grafts without stopping your heart. Many hospitals are now using the off-pump method. If your surgeon uses the on-pump procedure, then the answer is yes. The heart is stopped, and your blood is circulated through a heart-lung machine where it is filtered and oxygenated and then returned to you until your heart is once again beating on its own. You can check with your surgeon to see which method will be used for you. I should mention here that heart valve patients always have their heart surgery on pump, and obviously they never have a vein or artery harvested for their surgery. Heart valve replacement patients will either receive a tissue valve or a mechanical valve as a replacement. You can discuss the advantages of both with your surgeon before your surgery. Once the surgeon has completed all of your bypass, and or repaired or replaced your heart valve, then he will put everything back in place and begin to close you up. He will use titanium wire to wire your breastbone back in place. He uses titanium wire because bone can attach itself to titanium, so after your bone heals, the wires just stay there. If at some point in the future you ever have a chest x-ray, if you look from the front, you can hardly see the wires, but if you look from the side, you'll clearly be able to see the loops. Once that is completed, the surgeon will suture your skin closed with absorbable sutures beneath the surface of your skin, and sometimes seal your incision with super glue. Yep, super glue. Just like the stuff you get in the hardware store, but pharmaceutical grade, and I'm sure a lot more expensive. Your family will be notified that surgery is almost completed, and when done, you will be sent to what most people think of as an intensive care room for the waking up process. Many times, cardiac patients are taken to an area in the hospital known as CTU, or cardiothoracic unit. CTU usually has several intensive care rooms, but Different hospitals have different areas where patients are sent to recover. If you want to know ahead of time what the area looks like, just ask to see the room where you will be sent before your surgery, possibly during your pre-admission testing, or simply ask a heart ambassador. And now, on to the next video. What to expect during the waking up process.